you very much, John, and um, good morning, everyone. I'm going to be talking to you about the cardiac adaptation to exercise and the physiologic limits of the athlete's heart. Now, people who engage in intensive exercise for a minimum of four hours per week develop a constellation of structural and functional changes to enable the heart to generate and maintain a sustained cardiac output for several hours. In short, the athlete's heart is characterized by bradycardia, a modest increase in left ventricular wall thickness, and a modest increase in left and right ventricular volumes, and a high peak oxygen consumption. If we turn to the ECG, sinus bradycardia is very common in elite athletes, present in up to 80%. Early repolarization changes affecting the ST segment and T wave, by T wave I mean tall T waves, are present in around 70%, sinus arrhythmia in around a half, voltage criterion for left ventricular hypertrophy in around a half, incomplete right bundle branch block in almost one third, and first degree AV block in around 5%. When it comes to, so this, this is the athlete's ECG in short, sinus bradycardia, right axis deviation, sokolov leon voltage criterion for left ventricular hypertrophy, incomplete right bundle branch block, and J-point elevation with concave ST segments, usually in the inferior and or the lateral leads. There is nothing wrong with this ECG. <clears throat> when it comes to the heart, there's usually a 10 to 20% increase in left and right ventricular cavity size, around a 10 to 20% increase in left ventricular wall thickness, which results in around a 40% increase in left ventricular mass. Clearly the magnitude with which these changes occur is governed by several demographic factors which include the athlete's age, the athlete's size, the ethnicity, the sporting discipline, and the athlete's sex. And some of these athletes do develop very profound changes that can sometimes overlap with disease processes. When it comes to the ECG, it's usually the repolarization changes that cause us concern. Here are normal repolarization changes affecting the ST segment and the T wave. You've already seen that athletes often get J-point elevation, they get concave ST segment elevation, sometimes even convex ST segment elevation. They get tall T waves and pr often prominent U waves. But some athletes get deep T wave inversion, biphasic T waves, notched T waves, or may even exhibit a QT interval that exceeds the upper limits of normal for the general population. If we look at the LV size, this is um, a bar chart looking at males and females in a, in a very large Italian cohort. The females are in the red bars, the males are in the blue bars. And the first thing to appreciate is that males have bigger cavities than females. The second thing is that around half of all athletes have a left ventricular cavity size that exceeds the upper limit of normal for the general population. By that I mean by more than uh, an LV cavity that exceeds 54 millimeters. Very importantly though, is that 14% of athletes have a left ventricular cavity size that is 60 millimeters or more, which is compatible with dilated cardiomyopathy. The same is true with the right ventricle. This is, this is a distribution of right ventricular outflow tract measurements in black athletes and white athletes, and I just want you to focus on the blue shaded area, where 40% of white athletes and around 30% of black athletes have a right ventricular outflow tract diameter that would be consistent with a major criterion for arrhythmogenic right ventricular cardiomyopathy. It's usually the endurance sports where we see the most profound changes. And in this sport, it's usually the adult males with large body surface areas that cause the greatest conundrums. It's the sport that's the most important. And within the sport, it's usually the males with the largest body surface areas that cause issues. This is an endurance athlete. And this is, they get profound bradycardia. They may also get Mobitz type one second degree AV block. And if you look at very good marathon runners, up to 25% may show Mobitz type one second degree AV block during resting conditions. Here is excellent data from an Australian group where 
85% or 80% were endurance sports people, these were white individuals. And the thing that I wanted to uh, emphasize to you is that in this white group of endurance athletes, 14.3% had T-wave inversion in the anterior leads, of which 10.4% was confined to leads V1 and V2, and around 4% in leads V1 to V3. Clearly we get concerned when we see T-wave inversion beyond V2 in white athletes. Another study from Aaron Bagish's group, mainly looking at rowers, 330 of these, of which around half were women, they found that T-wave inversion confined to V1 to V2 was present in over a quarter, but T-wave inversion extending beyond V2 was present in far less, around 1% of white athletes. <coughs> This is data here look, comparing the Seattle criteria and the refined criteria looking at high level athletes versus high intensity athletes, people who do endurance sport versus people who do start stop sport. And you find that people who do endurance sport are more likely to have an abnormal ECG with respect to Seattle criteria, 8.5% versus 5.4% in people who don't do such intensive exercise. And even if you introduce the refined criteria, you're more likely to have an abnormal ECG if you're an endurance athlete, 4.2%, than if you're not an endurance athlete, 2%. If we look at dimensions and sport, if we start with isometric sport at the top, yachting and wrestling, and we go down to the bottom to look at purely endurance sports, such as long distance running, swimming and cycling, where the red bars represent left ventricular <coughs> wall thickness, and the blue bars represent the left ventricular cavity size, you see that the greatest left ventricular wall thickness measurements and the greatest cavity, cavity dimensions are present in athletes who are pure endurance sports people. And this is highlighted best in this study uh, in 286 Tour de France cyclists, where 50% had a left ventricular cavity size of more than 60 millimeters, that's half the Tour de France athletes, had a cavity that's compatible with dilated cardiomyopathy. And 9% had a left ventricular wall thickness, which was more than 13 millimeters, a measurement that is compatible with morphologically mild hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. <clears throat> so, as I said before, it's the sport that's the most important thing. Sport is more important than size and sex. And to bring up size, this is a great study by David Engel, uh, published in JAMA Cardiology last year, which looks at the biggest sportsmen that we know, basketball players with a mean body surface area of 2.38. You will see that in this sport, 36% of basketball players had a left ventricular cavity size of 60 millimeters or more. But this was still much less than the Tour de France athletes who are endurance athletes. So it's the sport that matters most. Sticking with size, no matter how big you are, you don't normally get an aortic root of more than 40 millimeters. That's very uncommon, present in about 1.3% of athletes, but never more than 42 millimeters. So if you're looking at the biggest sportsman, if you see an aortic root of more than 40 millimeters, that should ring warning bells. <coughs> What about the impact of sex? Clearly, I could keep talking about endurance athletes, but males are different to females, and it's very important to talk about females because females now excel just like males did. They're the biggest growing population of elite athletes. They participate in sports that were dominant, dominated by men, and if you look at participation in the Olympics from 1900 to 2012, you'll see that in the London 2012 Olympics, women made up nearly 45% of all sports individuals. Women are generally smaller, they have a lower lean body mass, they've reduced circulating androgens, and as a result of that, they don't generate the size, um, it, it's the cardiac size that men can. Here's a study that looks at women, and I'm, I'm embarrassed to say this still remains one of the biggest studies ever published in women, 600 female athletes versus 66 sedentary individuals. And what this study showed was that compared to controls, uh, female athletes got a 6% greater increase in left ventricular wall thickness and a 14% greater increase in left ventricular cavity size compared to sedentary counterparts. But if we compare women with men, you will see that whereas 47% of men get an LV cavity size of more than 55, this is only present in 8% of women. <coughs> 
Whereas 24% of men can get an LV cavity size of more than 60 millimeters, this is only present in 1% of women. So what you can say from this slide is that if you get a male athlete, an endurance sportsman with an LV cavity of more than seven centimeters, you should be concerned. If you get a female athlete with an LV cavity size of more than six centimeters, you should start to get slightly concerned. <clears throat> Here is the distribution of left ventricular wall thickness between men and women. These are elite athletes from Italy. And the males are in the blue bars again. The women are in the red bars. You see here that it's very unusual for a woman to get a left ventricular wall thickness of more than 11 millimeters. It's very uncommon for a male to get a left ventricular wall thickness of more than 16 millimeters. So these are the rules I have. A wall thickness of more than 11 in a woman, I get concerned. A wall thickness of more than 16 millimeters in a male, I would be concerned. Women don't get the sort of absolute increase in left ventricular wall thickness that we see in men. So maybe one way of looking at a woman is to look at left ventricular geometry, which relies on a combination of relative wall thickness and left ventricular mass index, whereby normal geometry is someone who's got a normal relative wall thickness and a normal left ventricular mass. Eccentric hypertrophy is someone who's got a, an increased LV mass and a normal relative wall thickness. Um, cardiac remodel, concentric remodeling is someone who's got a high relative wall thickness and a normal LV mass, and concentric hypertrophy is someone who's got increase in relative wall thickness and an increase in left ventricular mass. If we look at males and females, we find that both males and females get abnormal geometry in around 30% of cases. So they either get eccentric hypertrophy, concentric remodeling, or concentric hypertrophy. But if we actually look at endurance sports women compared to men, men here and women here, women generally get eccentric hypertrophy. So women adapt to sport by getting a bigger ventricle rather than a thicker ventricle. The, 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 the prevalence of concentric hypertrophy is rare in women. And so what we've started using at St. George's Hospital is using a left ventricular mass index of more than 145. So we've got a female with an LV mass index of more than 145 grams per meter squared or a relative wall thickness of more than 0.48, we would consider this as pathological based on this very large study. So we don't always rely on just wall thickness, we rely mainly on relative wall thickness in women. If we look at women when it comes to their ECGs, although they get the same quant qualitative changes as men, voltage criterion for left ventricular hypertrophy is much, much more common and deep T-wave inversion in women is almost absent. They very rarely get deep T-wave inversion. What about the impact of ethnicity? You'll hear more about this later on in my talk. But um, African or Afro-Caribbean football players or basketball players seem to dominate sports, uh, sports personalities in the US. They also get marked repolarization changes. They get more hypertrophy than white individuals. And there is emerging evidence that they are more prone to sudden cardiac death during sport than the white athlete. <clears throat> Here is the distribution of wall thickness measurements in white athletes in the gray bars and black athletes in the black bars. You will see that whereas only 2% of white athletes get a wall thickness measurement of 12 millimeters or more, this is as high as 13% in black athletes. So the two messages to take away from this slide is that black athletes get more left ventricular hypertrophy than white athletes. The second message is no matter what the ethnicity, a wall thickness measurement of more than 16 millimeters in any male should make you think of pathology. In my experience in the UK, I have never seen a wall thickness measurement of more than 14 millimeters in a white male athlete. <clears throat> Here is data in women, black women versus white women, black women in the blue bars, white women in the red bars. You will see that whereas no white woman developed a wall thickness of more than 11 millimeters, 3% of black women may achieve between 12 and 13 millimeters in wall thickness. What about uh, ECG changes? We worry about T-wave inversion. 25% of black athletes get T-wave inversion in Europe. Things, things may be less so in, in the US. But these T-wave inversions are predominantly located in leads V1 to V4. And there's, there are three very important points about this ECG. Apart from it looks very frightening, 
Uh, this is actually a normal ECG in a black athlete. Here you've got T-wave inversion confined to leads V1 to V4, that's point number one. The T-wave inversion is preceded by J-point elevation and convex ST segments. And you see that the T-wave inversion is rather asymmetric with a very steep downward descent. And this, this type of ECG pattern when confined to leads V1 to V4 is a normal variant in black athletes. However, the presence of T-wave inversion in the infralateral leads should always raise suspicion of cardiac pathology. Now, I've seen lots of case reports coming from the United States saying there's nothing wrong with this ECG. I promise you there is. You just haven't found out yet that there is something wrong with this ECG. <coughs> the impact of age. <coughs> Children are slim, so they've got slim chest walls, therefore they exhibit large curious complexes. They often get the juvenile ECG pattern, i.e. T-wave inversion, it leads V1 to V4, and because they're physically less mature, they've got less lean body mass, they, they don't get as big a cardiac dimension as men, uh, as, as, as grown-ups. So when, in terms of T-wave inversion, T-wave inversion is present in leads V1 to V3 in up to 9% of individuals aged over, under 14, but this, this drops steeply to 0.2% once the individual is aged more than 16 years old. So the persistence of the juvenile ECG pattern going beyond V2 in a grown-up uh, who is not necessarily an endurance athlete should cause some concern in a white individual. Here is the, the, the biggest data set in adolescent athletes um, uh, in the literature, 750 adolescent athletes with a 3 to 1 ratio of males to females. And we found that compared to controls, adolescents get a 6% increase in LV cavity size compared to a 10% increase amongst adults. They get a 10 to 13% increase in left ventricular wall thickness compared to 20% in adults. They get a 30% increase in LV mass compared to around 40% in adults. Here you see the bar chart of LV cavity size. We don't see LV cavity dimensions more than 60 millimeters in adolescent athletes, it's certainly the males, and we don't see LV cavity dimensions more than 54 millimeters in adolescent females. But you've got to take into account black versus white. Now, whereas only 0.6% of adolescent athletes, usually males, get a wall thickness of more than 12, this hypertrophy process starts young in a black individual, and 7% of black adolescent athletes get a left ventricular wall thickness of 12 millimeters or more, but never more than 15 millimeters. If we look at the ECG changes in uh, black athletes, and I think that's, that's been omitted, you, you get a higher prevalence of T-wave inversion in black athletes as well in the adolescents. So I told you early on that adult, adult black individuals uh, have a prevalence of T-wave inversion of 25%. This is not far different in adolescence as well. We find that around 23% of our adolescent black athletes also have T-wave inversion. So if you've been asleep for the last 15 or 18 minutes, this is all you need to remember about my talk. This is the adult white as your reference who shows sinus bradycardia, large caress complexes, 10 to 20% increase in LV wall thickness, usually less than 13, and an LV and RV cavity exceeding the upper limits in 50%. This is your reference. If you add into that the adult endurance athletes, they're the ones that get profound bradycardia, large caress voltages, may get T-wave inversion going up to V3. They get the largest dimensions, up to 60 millimeters in females, up to 70 millimeters in males, and LV wall thickness uh, is generally less than 14 millimeters in a white endurance athlete. When we took black athletes, they get the most profound repolarization changes affecting the ST segment and T waves. They get the most marked LV hypertrophy between 13 and 16 millimeters. They also exhibit LV trabeculations as well. Women get similar changes to men, but less so. They get smaller voltages. They do have a higher prevalence of T wave inversion in V1 to V2. They get eccentric hypertrophy, whereby they increase LV cavity size rather than increase LV wall thickness. It's very uncommon to see an LV wall thickness of less than 12 millimeters in women. Adolescents often get the juvenile ECG pattern. They have the smallest dimensions and LV cavity beyond 53 in a female, beyond 60 millimeters in a male is abnormal. Thank you very much.